شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Concerning the topic today, I want to start off by bringing to your attention the fact that the Prophet of Islam وسلم, has mentioned many things concerning Ramadan. Many a hadith that talk about the ahkam of Ramadan, the fawaid or the benefits of Ramadan, that talk about the fadail and the virtues of Ramadan, the adab of Ramadan, and it's the responsibility for every Muslim before Ramadan to start to get a tafakkuh and start to learn about these things so that he can have a better Ramadan. Once Ramadan starts, he continues, she continues to learn about the fiqh of Ramadan. It's not just I'm going to fast and that's it. You want to fast the correct way. So throughout the month of Ramadan, you have to learn. And the Prophet said many things about Ramadan, many things about the suhoor, about the niyyah, about qiyamul layl, so many things about the ahkam of Ramadan. They are a lot. But I want to start this talk off by saying, two of the most important things that he said about Ramadan. All of those things that were said, two of the most important things that were said about Ramadan that you have to keep in your mind. We have to keep it in our mind throughout the course of Ramadan. We have to understand it and we have to always remind ourselves of it and remind other people about it. Two of the most important things out of all of those things is the authentic hadith in which he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laysa Siyam Min Al Akli wa Shurb, Wa Inama Siyamu Min Al Lagu wa Rafaf. For in Sabaka Ahadun, O Jahila Ali, for Kul, Inni Saimun, Inni Saim. Most important hadith, one of them. He said, Fast in. Is not abandoning your food or abandoning your drink. That's not fasting. That's not the real fast. He said the real fast is for a person to abandon vain speech and to abandon acting in a lewd way. Watching what's lewd, saying what's lewd, listening to what's lewd. And being a person who is dealing with these two. He says, so therefore... If an individual were to argue with you, don't argue back. If someone argued, he cursed you, or he acted ignorantly towards you, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then say to that person, hey, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. So if someone acts in an ignorant way towards you and you act ignorantly back towards him, you're not fasting. You're not understanding what fasting is. You're not fasting, you're not understanding what fasting is. If a person is listening to music and doing crazy things, it's not fasting. Now, we're fasting 18 hours or something like that. And there is a level of difficulty in leaving off our food and our drink. There's a level of difficulty. During the course of the day, especially after Dhuhr, for me, after Dhuhr, that's when I start feeling a bit hungry. But if I'm busy with this or that, it goes away. Like right now, I'm not hungry. Someone else after Asa, he may be hungry. See, so the person finds some difficulty a little bit in abandoning his food and his drink, but he's doing it every day. 
but he'll come to this masjid or some other masjid and in that masjid there is a person that before Ramadan he doesn't give him salam and they don't give him salams back in the month of Ramadan they're still not going to salam that is difficult for him he'll leave off food he'll leave off drinks but he won't stop being an enemy to someone and the reason why he has animosity is something from the dunya something that it's not a justified reason for them to be doing what they're doing. But neither one of them is going to rectify the problem. Not in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. So the difficulty in Ramadan is not the food and the drink. He can do that. Right now, he's doing that. But he won't make peace with someone he has a problem with from his relatives. He won't call them up and say, I'm sorry, and so forth and so on. That's the first hadith. The second hadith is similar to it. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Men lem yada'a qawla zur wal amala bihi fa laysa lillahi haja fi an yada'a ta'amuhu wa sharabuhu. Two important hadith have to keep it in our minds. Whoever does not abandon acting in a fraudulent way, dealing with fraud and lying, and he doesn't abandon speaking about fraud and acting in a fraudulent way, Allah doesn't have any need for him to leave his food and his drink. Now, in the month of Ramadan, some of us, because this society, the way life is, is built upon azur and qawl azur and al amal bizur, this society. Fraud. Fraud meaning what? The person is fasting, he's fasting, but he wants to take the local bus in this city, the local bus. You can get on the bus in this country without paying. You can give them an old ticket and show it to them and ride. And you know that ticket was from a week ago, two weeks ago. And he's fasting. The fast is against that thing. The individual who is lying to the government, for an example, and he's getting more money or he's doing tricks like this, and, and it's not true what he's saying. And he's fasting. And he never thought about, hey, you know this thing that I'm doing, this or this amal with the zur, this thing compromises my fast. Not being truthful, not being honest. And a person doesn't even think about it. And like I told you, this society is built upon lying. People almost feel I have to be deceitful. I have to deceive the government and people in order to get what I want. I'm a businessman, I have some kind of business. So when I sell my products to people, I'm selling them products that I know they're out of date and I'm fasting and I never realize, I never realize if I don't stop doing this, Allah doesn't have any need for me to abandon my food and my drink. It's not telling you to eat. If you don't do this, you don't stop doing this, go in and eat and drink. But it's saying these are the things we have to consider. We have to consider. And, and, and it's a serious issue. Most people, except the people that Allah had rahma upon them. Most people are doing things. There's deceit in what we're doing. Deceit in what we're saying. So those two hadith, we have to keep them in our minds. And the reason for that, in dealing with this topic that I want to deal with today, inshallah, and keeping with that, we know the illa, the hikmah, the reason that Allah Azza wa Jal made fasting obligatory upon us and the people who came before us as he mentioned in the ayat at the end of the ayat لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ in the hopes that you people will have a taqwa so everybody here who's a Muslim alhamdulillah everybody here is a Muslim before the month of Ramadan everybody here was on a level of a taqwa everybody was on a level of a taqwa but when Ramadan comes everybody here their level it goes up everybody because we start to obey Allah and as an iman is with Ahl Sunnah Alul Hadith people of Salafiya Al iman it's your statements it's your actions what you believe in your heart it manifests itself it has to on your limbs the more you obey Allah the more your iman goes up the more you disobey Allah your iman goes down so we're going to have more obedience in the month of Ramadan. So our iman is going to go up. So all you have to do is look in the masjid. 
Salat al dhuhr Salat al-Asr. There are more people praying in every masjid right now. Right now, right now. In this masjid, there is a person who, when it's not Ramadan, he doesn't pray in the masjid. But Ramadan came, he didn't miss a single wajib prayer in the masjid yet. There's a person who read a juice of the Quran every day so far. He doesn't do that outside of the month of Ramadan. So we're all going to be more cognizant of Allah because our taqwa, it rises. So the good things that a person is doing before Ramadan, when Ramadan comes, he enhances them and he tries to do more. The bad things that he was doing before Ramadan, he tries to get rid of them, tries to kill them. Like the audience, you people right now. We watch less TV. Some people didn't even know in America there was a shooting this morning in which they're saying about 50 people were killed in some type of a club. Some people didn't even know that. They didn't know that because he's not watching TV. And now the news is going around. Because in the month of Ramadan, he's trying to be a better person. So the shahid from the karam is that we're going to try to do more. As far as the people who come to the masjid now, and they didn't come outside of the month of Ramadan, I have to mention this right now. I was in the masjid the other day, my local masjid. Just like this masjid, in my local masjid, there are the people who pray in the masjid all year round. And in the first row are the same people, like for Juma and for all of the salawat, the same people in the first row. But now in the month of Ramadan, more people are going to come to the masjid and they're going to come early to get in the first row. So if you're a person who used to visit the masjid and used to pray in the first row, you have to come earlier now to compete with those people now. I was praying in the masjid, one of the brothers, one of the brothers who always prays in the masjid, he got upset because for three days, four days, he misses Salat in the first row. Because the people who normally don't come to the masjid are there. He lost his cool and he said, ah, you people don't come to the masjid outside of Ramadan, you Ramadan Muslims. I looked at him, I couldn't believe that he would say that. And I know his head was in a good space. You fast, some people get upset. I think he was just muta nervous, so he said that. I don't think he really meant that. He didn't mean that. I'm sure he didn't mean that. Because the way we should look at it is, alhamdulillah, more people in the masjid. So although I pray in the masjid all year long and I'm in the first row, now that there are more people in the masjid who normally don't come, instead of criticizing them, what I should do is say, this is a fursat for me. More chance to give da'wah to more people. More chance to advise more people. More chance to say salamu alaikum to more people. More chances to get more barakah, more people. Who in his right mind would say, for an example, from our community are those people from every masjid who fast every Monday, every Thursday. This is standard with them. They're not like us, people who just fast in Ramadan and maybe the day of Ashura. These, these, these people fast every Monday. Can you imagine one of those people say, ah, you people now fast in the month of Ramadan, you Ramadan Muslims. And he's criticizing us for fasting Ramadan because he fasts every Monday and Thursday. We're going to say, hey man, this is the way Ramadan is. It is hoped perchance that because the people are doing more in Ramadan, they will continue to do that. We don't look at them. This is a characteristic of the Yahud. Yahsudun al nas ala atahumullah. They have hasid and haqt. If they see people doing it, they're the ones who be upset with people. We're not like that. We're not like that. So it's not permissible for the person to feel that way about people. So the point here is, in the month of Ramadan, we have to enhance what we were already doing that was better. Those things that are in us. And we have to do more of and bring on board and inculcate those things that we were not doing. Reading the Quran more, hearing the Quran more, more in fact, so today I want to talk about only one thing. And there are many things to talk about. But I want to talk about something practical, a terrible characteristic that is in our community, a terrible characteristic that's in us. Is something that Allah has planted and placed in the fitrah of Bani Adam. And it has to be dealt with. Because if the person doesn't deal with it, he's going to have a characteristic that's a problem. The sheikh has it. The tulab al they have it. Everybody has it. But the more taqwa that a person has, the more he'll get it under control. And it, 
it sometimes is not even considered. And I want to not challenge you, but I want to make a tanbih. After I give this daras to you today, inshallah, pay close attention to the people who talk to you. And watch how, watch how this characteristic is in everybody. It's even in us, despite ourselves. It's something that we don't even think about. And it goes against the spirit of Ramadan. And if it goes against the spirit of Ramadan and Ramadan came to kill it, came to get it under control, then it goes against the spirit of Al-Islam. And it's something basit. Like we look at it as being small, but it's not small. And that is the characteristic that people have of complaining. Complaining too much and complaining unnecessarily. Now listen to what I just told you. After this dars, inshallah, pay close attention to everybody who comes to you to talk to you, to spend some time with you, and weigh and evaluate what is he saying to you. And I guarantee you, and Allah knows best, you're going to find those people who are going to fall into this issue of complaining. So out of all of the things that we have to change within ourselves, lying, month of Ramadan, is a month in which we have to kill that lion. Lion. So it's a bad thing. Month of Ramadan comes when people ask you something. You want to lie. You want to lie. But you know, man, if I lie, this is against the fast and the etiquette of fasting. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever doesn't abandon deceit, lies, then Allah doesn't have any need for him to abandon his food and his drink. So as a result of that, the person will be quiet or he won't tell the truth and he makes jihad against himself. Many, many issues. But this simple one is a big problem. Let me say first, after mentioning that, which shakawa am I talking about? Which ishtika? Which complaining I'm talking about? And I'm telling you not to complain at all. Kalla wallahi. Some complaining is permissible. Some complaining is wajib. Some complaining, Allah gave you the haq to complain. قَدْ سَمِي اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Verily Allah hears the discussion that's taking place between you, Muhammad, and the lady from your companion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَرَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Allah hears the discussion and Allah hears her complaints that she's making to you. So the Muslim woman, the wife, her husband is behaving in the way that's not permissible. He's not doing what he should be doing or he's doing things that are taking her haq. She has every right to complain to her wali, to her brother, to the iman, to the qadi. She has every right, every right. So Islam is not against that, and that's not what I'm talking about. Someone needs to complain to get help. The Muslims right now in Eritrea, they have every right to complain what they are getting in the way of the mu'amala from the Ethiopian Christian government. They have every right to complain to the world. So they just did some research. They found out that that government over there in Ethiopia are guilty of making Crimes on humanity, what they've been doing to the Muslims. The Kashmiri Muslims, they have a right to complain. What the Indian government is doing to them, those Hindus, they have every right. Who in his right mind is going to understand what I'm saying here, that they shouldn't complain? Islam said don't complain. You have a right. The Iraqis, they have a right. The Syrians, they have a right. The children in those countries can say, hey, you people have destroyed our lives. Our future has been compromised, inshallah, because you're bombing us and you decimated our country. They have every right. I think you get the picture. I'm not saying every complaint is impermissible. I'm not. We have a right to complain when these European leaders come before Ramadan and they put their hands out to shake our hands by telling the community Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Mubarak. The Western countries do that. America and other than that. And then they start telling us about the virtues of Ramadan, teaching us our religion. So they shake our hands with this hand and they're stabbing us in the back with the other hand because they support some of those countries. And I gave you the examples. Those Muslim countries have the right to complain. 
So we can complain and say, hey, that's hypocrisy. We're complaining to you. Don't come telling us Ramadan Mubarak and telling us the beauty of Ramadan and this thing that happened in America just today, right away you people are saying it's connected to Islam and Islamic radicalism and you don't even know yet. It's not fair. Islamophobia. We have the right to complain. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about complaining unnecessarily like what we hear from our community. The imam is praying too long. The kanut is too long. Why are we drinking this water? Why didn't the masjid buy that water? Oh, it's so hot outside. Oh, the long hours in the day. Complaining about things that have nothing to do with, that can't be changed by anyone. But just complaining for no reason. What you're saying, it can't be changed. And even if it's within your own life, your own real life, you shouldn't complain like that to any and everybody. As you're going to see, inshallah. Don't be one of those people who complain. Right now, in the month of Ramadan, the atmosphere in the masjid is an atmosphere in which the religion is forcing us to be like the companions in our brotherhood. Radwanallahi alayhi. This atmosphere forces us. First day of Ramadan, Monday. I gave a lecture in London. Left London, made it to Green Lane. I made the last two rakat and the three rakat of al witr I sat down because I was tired. I looked at all of those people and there was a festive feeling in the air. You could see the Muslims were happy. It's Ramadan. Although we're going to make jihad and we're going to fast. But nonetheless, Muslims, you, you, you can feel them happy to be a Muslim. So this month, it forces us to be good people. But there are those people who, despite it being Ramadan or not, they're going to go against the spirit of Ramadan. They're going to be problematic in what they do, how they keep fitting or going, what's happening. So instead of coming and talking about things like, hey, we have to change ourselves. Those of you who smoke, stop smoking. Those of you who don't wear hijab, stop wearing hijab. We hear that all the time. I want to remind you of something that is in most people, and we don't even consider it. Why do I say it's in most people? From the Kitab and the Sunnah, we know that the desire to complain is with Bani Adam. And from the way that the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that complaining is something that needs to be dealt with, addressed, and tackled. Allah mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Ma'arij, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُرِقَ هَلُوعًا إِذَا مَسَّهُ شَرْ جَزُوعًا وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرْ مَنُوعًا Verily, mankind has been created. The way they were created is that they're in haste. They're in haste. They want everything yesterday. They don't want to wait until the time that is right to do whatever it is that needs to be done to come to them. So he wants it yesterday. And if any evil touches him, he's going to complain. And if any good comes to him, he's going to hold back that good. He won't give when Allah gives to him. For an example, in the other local masjid that I pray in, the other local masjid, so that lets you know I have at least two wives. In the other local masjid that I pray in, it's a cultural masjid. I pray there because it's close to my house. But subhanAllah, anyway, after every single prayer, dhuhr, asr, every day since Ramadan, someone gets up and they start soliciting money for some project over in Pakistan, over in India, all the time, every day, every single day. So the one who was sitting in the audience every day, just like this masjid and every masjid, when someone stands up and says, okay, Ikhwani, here's a project, here's a mashroor, can you give Fisa Bililah, we're going to open up a madrasa, we're going to open up this, we need money for a hospital, there's a masjid, the person says, oh, again, another person asking us for money, every day they're asking us for money. Yeah, that's the nature of Ramadan. Either give it or don't give it. But the nature of Ramadan, if you're fasting the psalm of the sunnah, then your sadaqah, your infaq has to increase. If you're not giving anything and you have it, I'm not saying that your psalm is batil, but I'm saying you're not fasting the psalm of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, when Ramadan came and Jibril came to him, Rasulullah would spend more and he became more jawad. 
In Ramadan, he read the Quran more. In Ramadan, he heard the Quran more. So if a person is fasting, he's fasting, and he's leaving haram alone, his salam, inshallah, is acceptable. But the fast of the sunnah, it necessitates, it dictates. You should give more money during this month because it's the nature of Ramadan. And you should read the Quran more this month and listen to it more this month. That's what the Prophet was upon, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So therefore, once I know that, once I know that, someone gets up in this masjid every single night, we get phone calls. Can we, Masjid Al-Furqan, come to Green Lane Masjid to get sadaqah? We want a night. The other masjid, can we come, can we come, can we come? So we say, yeah, 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 yeah. Every time a, a person representing the organization come, the community is sitting there and they say, spin in the cause of Allah. The one who is sitting there, he's waiting for Salat al-Taraweeh. He said, again, another person asking for money? That's the type of complaining. You didn't have to say that. So the mankind, if misfortune touches him, he's going to complain. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in proving this point, people are going to complain. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Ibn Adam, in Asabuhu al Har, Kala Hass, Wa in Asabuhu al Bard, Kala Hass. He said, Benny Adam, if the heat touches him, he's going to say, Hass. And if the cold touches him, he's going to say has. And has is one of those sounds that the Arabs used to make different from what we make. But we have the same sounds, the different cultures. We say things like, ouch. If you touch the stove and it burns you, you say, ouch. It's one of those words. Something that you say, it's not really a word, but it's a sound to let people know how you're feeling about that thing. Ugh. You, you see something you don't like, you say, ugh. There's no word called ugh, but you just make that word. So the prophet had a lot of those. He saw his grandson, Hassan, about to pick a date up off of the ground. And the prophet didn't know if that date, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was from a zakat, a sadaqah, or not. So in order to get the boy's attention, radiallahu anhu, he said, bakh, bakh. Get his attention. Bakh, bakh. Another companion. He was making the jihad and the Prophet told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you get killed defending Islam in the real jihad, not the facade that we're always talking about, not the facade of the efforts of some of these extreme Muslims, ISIS and people like that. That's not jihad, that's fitna, that's facade. But if you participate in the jihad, you're going to go to Jannah and in Jannah, you're going to get this and that and this and this and this and that. The man has some dates. And when he heard the hadith of the Nabi, he said, Ya Rasulullah, you mean to tell me the only thing that comes up between me and going to Jannah and getting all of that rewards is for me to eat these dates? He said, bah, bah, this is, takes, it's too much time to eat these dates. I want to go to Jannah. And he just went and he dealt with the person. So the point here is that word has, it's a word that they said to show a dislike for something. So if it's hot, he's going to say has. If it's cold, it's going to say has. You bring him food, he's going to say it's too hot. You bring him food, he's going to say it's too cold. You bring him food, he says it's too spicy. But the Prophet Sunnah was, like Anas ibn Malik said, radiallahu anhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if any food was put before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never complained. He never complained. He either ate it, or he left it. So when the wife puts the food there and the person, the kid, the relatives, the father, anybody who complains, this is what I'm talking about, whether it's in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. And there are some people who all they do is complain. Being in a life, being in a house with a wife, a mother, a father, all they do is complain is a difficult situation. Ramadan is an opportunity to kill that. Ramadan is an opportunity to get rid of that because a person is thinking to himself, this complaining goes against, it goes against the system of Al-Islam. And in actuality, Ikhwani, as I told you, most people have this, but it's a characteristic that is found more in women, more in women. 
To the point that the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if the husband were to give her everything that she wanted, the one time that he doesn't give her something that she wants, the individual, the lady says, I never saw any good from you. You never, I never saw any good from you. And that's not even true. But it goes to show that the thing about complaining is more in women than it is in men. So as a man, as a man, if you have that characteristic and pay attention to the people who come to you after this dars, during the course of the day, watch how many people complain about everything, anything and everything. It's too hot, it's too cold. Complaining to someone about the heat, the weather. What am I going to do about the heat and the weather? We're fasting 18 hours. How would you like to be fasting right now in Somalia? To be fasting in Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in the Arab world, where that sun is serious. And that's something that the Kofab Quraysh used to do. Or the Munafiqeen of Al-Medina. Qalu la tanfiru fil har. They used to tell the companions, don't go out and don't fight. They were going to go to the battle of Tabuk. And the heat was extraordinarily hot. In the middle of the summer, and there was a heat wave. And they had to walk and they had to ride all the way to Tubuk. The Munafiqeen, instead of going, they started complaining. And they started to encourage the Muslims, don't go out and fight in this heat. It's too hot to be fighting. Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قُلْ نَارُ جَهَنَّمْ أَشَدُّ حَرًّا لَوْ كَانُوا يَفْقَهُونَ The heat of the hell fire is hotter than this if the people only knew. And then I find it really strange. Hey, could I get one of those tissues, my man? I find it really strange, Ikhwani, here, 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 in the UK, that the heat that we have is nothing compared to the heat of the places where we come from. I come from Africa. And the heat of Africa doesn't compare to this country where you only get 10 days of the sun. 10 days of the sun and that's it. And then the next day is going to be like this. But the person is complaining to you about the sun. And complaining to you about the fact that Allah made these hours of fast and 18 hours for us. So there's a principle that I want to share with you when it comes to complaining about things unnecessarily and over complaining. And that is, the hadith of the Prophet shows us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِنَّمَا الْجَزَاءُ عَلَى قَدْرَ النَّصَبِ Verily, the reward that you get will be comparable to the difficulty that you go through. So if you are fasting in a place 18 hours, your reward is going to be greater than the people who fast in the place where they're only fasting 8, 9, 10, 11 hours. The heat of the place where you're fasting is extreme. You're going to get more reward than the individuals fasting in the place where the heat is not that extreme. You don't have to destroy your efforts, destroy your reward by complaining. Complaining is a characteristic of Beni Israel in the Quran. They used to give their prophets and messengers a hard time, especially Musa. Salawatullahi wasalamuhu alayhi. Musa, by Allah's permission, he took them out single handedly from under the yoke of the oppression and the slavery of Fir'aun, where Fir'aun used to do with them what he wanted to do. He would kill their firstborn and take their wives and their daughters to do with them whatever he wanted to do with them. And the man couldn't do anything about that. And he used to make them work. You think your job is hard? He used to make them work the type of working that was serious. And we know they had to fast because fasting was wajib upon everybody. Did they have to fast in that condition? I don't know. But fasting was wajib upon them. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. The point is, their life was hard. When Musa took them out of bondage and freed them, and how did he free them? They just went to sleep and woke up and found themselves outside of Egypt? No. He freed them through a mu'jizah. And that each tribe from Beni Israel went through the Red Sea, looking at the water, open before them, and they walked through. And then they saw their enemy drown be behind them. And they still gave Musa a hard problem, a hard time worshiping a cow. So when they were in that condition, Allah said, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَى لَن نَسْبِرْ عَلَى طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ فَادْعُ لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُخْرِجْ لَنَا مِمَّا تُنْبِتُ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ بَقْلِهَا وَقِثَّائِهَا وَفُومِهَا وَعَدَسِهَا وَبَصْلِهَا 
They said to Musa when they got on the other side, hey Musa, we can't be patient eating the same food. They were eating food called salwa and manna. Both of those taste good actually, but that was all they had. They said, we can't keep eating the same food, Musa. They was with Fir'aun where they barely ate and they used to have to work. They said, we can't keep eating the same food. So we want you to make dua to your Lord, not our Lord, your Lord. Ask your Lord to provide for us the herbs of the earth, the cucumbers. Give us some adas, give us some onions, this and this and this and that. That is the complaining of Beni Israel. You should be happy that you're free. You should be happy that you have this religion, that Allah took you out of that condition. You have the ability to navigate through your life with hidayah from Allah, with a book. You have a rasul. Be happy with what Allah gave you. They used to complain in many ayat of the Quran. This was their situation. And that story from Surah Al-Baqarah and other than it is one of the main lessons from what happened with Bani Israel to our community. Don't be a group of people who complain unnecessarily. Don't be a group of people who overly complain. So I'm standing in Taraweeh and it's just an issue many times of just bending down, making sajda and standing up. For the one who doesn't know Arabic, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. As a matter of fact, I ask Allah Azzurjal to give you a multiplied reward because you're standing there and you don't know what the imam is saying. At least if you knew what he was saying, it can keep your mind preoccupied. The one who's an ajami and the majority of this ummah, we're not Arabs. He stands up in the salat. He doesn't know what's being said. If he knew the story, he can stay with the story. He doesn't know. But his iman, like the hadith said, man qama iman and wahtisaban, ghufir allahu, whoever stands up in Ramadan, iman and wahtisaban, he'll be forgiven for his sins. Wallahi, if this doesn't apply to the one who doesn't know Arabic, I don't know who it applies to as well. It's his iman that keeps him standing there all of that time, all of that time. But I'm talking about the one who knows Arabic. He listens to the imam read all of these ayat and all of these stories and this passes them by. What happened with Beni Israel, the way they asked too many questions, the way they gave their prophet difficult time the sunnah comes to someone is as if he's given the prophet وسلم, a difficult time when he rejects it the way he deals with it no we have to take examples from those stories examples from those ayat and we have to realize like the prophet said we're going to follow those people in every single thing that they did but there has to be a group of people who they're going to say, no, I'm not going to follow them. I'm going to try not to follow them. And one of the things that Beni Israel did was they used to go overboard in this issue of complaining unnecessarily. So now what does the Muslim do? Once he realizes, you know what? Complaining is permissible in El Islam, but there's a particular type of complaint. The complaint of the mother concerning her son or her daughter. My son, my daughter, they're fasting in the month of Ramadan, but they're really disrespectful to me. My son, my daughter, Ramadan is here. I support that they go to the masjid every day. I support that, but we want him here to break fast with the family. We want him here not to forget and not to neglect the role that the family has in being together in Ramadan. But the boy is a student of knowledge and he disregards his mother and his father. They're getting upset with him. So she complains. She has every right to complain. She has every right to complain. But we're not talking about that as I mentioned. We're talking about the unnecessary complaints that most people have and you don't need to do it. So how do we deal with it? We deal with it based upon what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and some of the other Ulama and some of the other prophets and messengers from Bani Israel. Our religion, Wallahi Ikhwani, like I told you, this Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan is a ni'mah from Allah and we need Ramadan. Because at some point, if something does not force us to slow down, we'll just keep on going being mutamarridun, like we become like renegades. So the month of Ramadan, puts a harness on a person, like when you put on a horse, to slow him down. You have to make toba. 
You're going overboard. You're going overboard. The person, he procrastinates. He says, yes, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to. But he keeps doing it. When the month of Ramadan comes, he has to slow down. Whatever he's doing, that's haram. In the month of Ramadan, everybody's going to consider that if he has some khair in him. He's going to consider what he's doing that's wrong. He may not fully stop it. Some people are able to totally stop it. But his conscience is going to speak to him. I could be a better father. I need to be taking care of my children. I'm divorced from their mother. And I'm not spending on my children. The man is going to say in the month of Ramadan. Allah doesn't have any need for me. Acting crazy. Acting in a way that's unacceptable. And... I expect to get reward and I left my children and I'm not giving them money. No. Ramadan forces a person to come and to start to reflect and consider his situation. It's a ni'mah. So our religion, the one that the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought us a religion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that explains to us everything we need to know. How does a person kill the unnecessary complainant? He looks at the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He told us in an authentic hadith, in the famous hadith, Man kana yu'min billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmut Anyone who believes in Allah in the last day, let him say what is good or let him be quiet. If you don't get control over your tongue in the month of Ramadan, then you're going to have a Ramadan that's going to be compromised. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let them say good and let them be quiet. So when you meet up with people, don't be so quick just to start complaining about something. He can't help you with it. And what you're saying, eh, well, why are you saying it? Say good to the person or just be quiet. Don't say anything else. Don't say anything at all. Let him speak good. What is the speaking good? This is important. The minhaj of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know, Ikhwani, I looked, at a, I looked at a video today on YouTube in which I was cleaning up my library before I came here. I said, let me take this opportunity to straighten up my library. I put on the video of a sheikh, Abu Suhaib. Abu Suhaib, the Jordanian. I believe he comes to different messages here in uh, Leicester. The talk was called the... The behavior of the righteous predecessors. The akhlaq of the righteous predecessors. I advise you people to listen to that talk. Abu Suhaib. The behavior and the akhlaq of the righteous predecessors. And he started just to give some examples of how the companions were in the way they behaved. So here I am, a person trying to be on the sunnah, I'm trying to be salafi, and I'm calling to a salafi, for an example. But in this issue, I never think once. Never think once. I have to be careful about what I say. I have to be careful. And most people fall into this. There are some people that Allah just gave them good akhlaq. It's just like that. They just gave it. And it's easy for them. But for the majority of the people, we have to work on that stuff. The majority of the people, we have to work on that. The Prophet saw one of his companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told that man, inna fika khaslatayn yuhibbuhum Allah. You have two characteristics that Allah loves. He said, what are they? Ya Rasulullah, what are these two things that I have that Allah loves, these characteristics? He told them, al-hilm wal-anat. You are gentle, you're soft, you're easy, and you're not in haste. You're not in a rush. Allah loves that, that you take it easy. You make decisions in an easy way, and you're not rough and tough. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, is it something that Allah just put in me, or is it something that I developed? He said, it's something that Allah gave you. Some people are like that. Allah just gave them good akhlaq. But for the most of us, the majority of us, our background, our upbringing, our personalities, they dictate that we have to make jihad on those issues. And we have to buy into, I have to make jihad on this issue. So anyway, let them speak good or let them be quiet. What is speaking good? As it relates to complaining, as it relates to being a complainer, Prophet Muhammad said, if anyone sees something that he doesn't like, something happens to you that you don't like, it's too hot, 
it's too cold, something like that. He told us to say an easy dua that most people already know. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. Something happens, I can't control it, I can't change it. My haq is not being taken away. And I say it with sincerity, just like that. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. That's how I say it. I don't say it when someone comes to me, I have a problem. He says to me, Abu Sam, are you okay? Is it okay? I say to him, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Because that's complaining. Like Ali said to the Khawarij, Kalimatul Haq uridu biha al batil. What I said is true, but I didn't want it in the real way you're supposed to say it. I'm not complaining. So that's the first thing. Be quiet, man. If you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. And from what is good that you can say is follow that sunnah. It's better than complaining. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. With sincerity. Also, from the minhaj of the prophets and the messengers of the past is what happened with Yaqub, a Nabi from Bani Israel, who received a lot of trouble and a lot of problems from the closest people to him, and they were his sons. And we say about Yaqub, as well as his sons, all of them, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in. Because after all of that, they became prophets after that Allah revealed to the brothers of Musa as well, the brothers of Yusuf as well, and they all became prophets and messengers. So the point here is, during the course of that story, when they came and they told Yusuf or they told Yaqub, hey, your son, your son, Yusuf, he stole something after they got him out away from the father, took him away from the father. The story went on. They say, your son stole something. He didn't believe them. He told them, this is something, this is something that your souls have made up. He said about himself and what he was going to do. He said, for sabrun jameel. Qala bal sawwalat lakum anfusukum amra. For sabrun jameel. You people making this up. I'm not going to, I'm not listening to what you're saying, but I'm going to have sabr jameel. In Al-Islam, there are different types of sabr. Different types. Like not eating and drinking, there's a type of sabr. It's one of the most important lessons of Ramadan is being patient. It's one of the most important lessons of Ramadan. Learning how to have sabr. But that's a particular kind of sabr. What is the sabr jameel? It's the best type of sabr that a person can have. Sabr jameel was also explained by Yaqub later on in the story. When Allah Ta'ala said that Yaqub said, Qala bal ashku bathi wa huzni lallahi wa a'lamu min allahi ma la ta'lamun. Yaqub said to them, I am only going to complain about what bothers me and I'm going to complain about my sorrow and my sadness. I'm only going to complain to Allah. And I know from Allah what you people don't know. That's sabr jameel. When an individual has something to complain about, but he doesn't go around telling everybody his issue. He complains to Allah in dua. He complains to Allah in the salat, in his sajda. He complains to Allah. He doesn't tell people what his problem is. Hey man, me, Abu Usama, I got all kind of things going on in my personal life. I barely know some of you. That man comes to me and we're making wudu. And next to me, I'm making wudu. He's making wudu. He says to me, Kaifa halika, Abu Usama. Abu Usama, kaifa halik. I start saying to him, you know my son did this and my son did that. And my wife, she was doing this. My wife was doing that. And I need some money and I need this and I need that. I don't even know that man. And some people are like that. Akhi, what's your name? Man, my wife did this. My wife did that. And my, she won't clean up the house. They don't cook for me. I don't. Sabr Jamil. What's sabr jameel? Sabr is beautiful, but sabrun jameel means don't complain like that. And you know, there's evil when you complain like that. You start complaining to people, you start complaining to people, you start to show your aura. Who in his right mind is going to show his aura to people who don't have the right to see his aura? You start to tell people about your family and your issues and stuff like that, and then that person may go and tell someone else, and at the end of the day, he's not going to help you anyway. And this is one of the important reasons, Ikhwani, why it is important for you to get a good friend, a trustworthy friend who 
sometimes you do need to have somebody to talk to. And that's not complaining. You just, they can't help you other than to give you good advice. But if you keep things in all the time, at some point, you may explode like a volcano. So you have to have a trustworthy brother, a trustworthy sister, so that when you do talk to them about something that's bothering you, they're going to give you good advice and they're going to give you good support. And I understand that. Psychologically, there's a need that people have, a need. But don't be one of those people who indiscriminately just talks to everybody and shares all of his personal and private issues and exposes his or her aura in front of the people of the real problems, the real problems that he has a right to complain about. As for the complaint, why does the masjid have these green Qur'ans and not the blue ones? Why does the masjid have the small Qur'ans as, a big to the big, as opposed to the big ones? Why is he this and why is he that? This is a major, this is an issue. And if you're in a position of organizing the masjid, if you are responsible for the administration, you'll see this is how our community is. The month of Ramadan is the month where the atmosphere, khwani, the atmosphere, I'm not going to say it's just nice. This is the atmosphere where we can be like Abu Bakr and Uthman Ali, the way they were between themselves all the time. Loving for your brother what you love for yourself and giving salams and being concerned about each other. This is that type of atmosphere. But I, like I told you, there are some people who, no matter what, Ramadan, outside of Ramadan, they're going to be people who are going to be problematic. They're going to be the people who, when it's time to break fast, in my local masjid, my local masjid, where the people are um, cultural, the break fast is at... 928 but for some reason the clock is slow and they won't change the clock because the elders are sometimes they like that all they have to do is put the clock up two minutes but they won't do it because the elders are like that and if we know elders are like that they won't budge we have to be patient with them every day in the month of Ramadan we have a group of brothers every day sitting down the clocks is really nine. When the time comes, the Adhan didn't go up. Five, six of them, they start eating in front of everybody. And then there's an argument. Every day, there's an argument. Every single day. So we said to those brothers, hey, 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 hey. Talk to the elders and chill. tell them to change the clock. They didn't. Okay, okay. If you want to follow that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this ummah will always be in good as long as they delay the suhoor and speed up the fitr. The, they speed up the, uh, the fitr. Okay, you're obeying the Nabi. But you don't have to do this right here sitting in front of the people. You don't have to do that right here. Do it in your car. Do it before you come in here. We're in the tent of the masjid. Go inside of the masjid and do it. Why do you have to do it here? Because you want to tr make trouble. You want to make trouble. So we tell them, just be patient. One more minute. Two more minutes. For the sake of, for the sake of peace. I also believe they should change that clock. I believe that. But which one is more worthy? Which one? That five, six, seven, eight of us, we break our fast and we create this big drama? Or waiting for one minute or two minutes. If you said, Abu Osama, I agree with them. I think we should follow what the Prophet said right then because he commanded us. Those two minutes, we're not going to delay. I respect your point of view. But I'm going to tell you, go inside the masjid and do that. As for me, I have to sit here. So I'm not going to do that. Because that one extra minute or two minutes, I think if... It pales in comparison as far as a problem is concerned than what we see going on with these brothers every single day. So try to be a person who's light on the community. Try to be a person who brings hate to the community. This is what I wanted to remind you brothers of. Say those things that were good as opposed to those things that cause trouble. Do the things that are good as opposed to doing things that are in trouble. And we show our praises to, to Allah who has guided us to this religion of Islam and given us this Ramadan. Because if it wasn't for Allah, we would have never been able to do it. We